Are we rolling? We are rolling. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Louise here from Letters from Lou. Um, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been an incredibly long, long time. I know it's been a long time. So I'm incredibly rusty. This feels very strange, I have to say, filming again. I've actually tried to film this video three times, <laughs> but I've had technical difficulties and umpteen things have gone wrong, but I am here, I am back. Um, I wanted to just give a brief explanation. So um, over the last couple of months, I've had a lot of um, health issues going on. Um, those have been rectified. I've changed my hours at work. So hopefully going forward, um, things will be a lot more stable, but I'm gonna talk about that later on in the video. I have my obligatory cup of tea which has now gone cold because of the amount of times I've tried to film the video. But hey ho, we're here. I'm doing it. I'm back. So <laughs> you'll have to excuse me if I seem a bit rusty. But I am. So I am doing the end of year book tag. On the plus side though, side note, I've got to practice a few times to get back into the swing of filming. So let's look on the positive side. <laughs> So I'm going to do the end of year book tag and this was created by Ariel Bissett, the lovely Ariel Bissett. I saw um, Simon of Savage Reads do this video and I also saw uh, Russell from Ink and Paper blog um, do this video too. So um, no one tagged me in it, I just saw them do it and I was like, yep, yeah, going to do it. Going to do it. Easy tag video to get back into the swing of filming. So questions. I've got notes because I need to be prepared in case I screw things up. <laughs> which is highly likely. Um, first question, are there any books you started this year that you need to finish? Yes, there are two books. Well, I'm going to talk about what I'm currently reading um, because they are some cracking, cracking books. I'm really enjoying them. So these, these two I want to finish before the end of the year. The first one is We Are Called to Rise by Laura McBride. And this is a really interesting book because it's got it's told from different perspectives and very different perspectives. It's set in Las Vegas, not in sort of all the bright lights and casinos and things, but in the suburbs. And one of the narrators is a middle-aged woman. Another narrator is a soldier. We have another narrator who's a little boy from an immigrant family in, the, in, in America. And they're all interlinked. And they're slowly, as I'm working my way through the book, they're slowly becoming more and more intertwined all their stories so they're each going through um, different struggles and hardships in their own personal lives um, and it's just really interesting she's she's a beautiful writer and yeah I want to want to finish definitely want to finish this before the end of the year the next one I'm reading I'm going to find on my kindle but I'm going to have to like buy the actual book because the cover is just just beautiful um, and it is The Keeper of Lost Things by Ruth Hogan. You see that's going to show up, yeah. And this is, again, a book told by multiple different narrators. Um, it's all about this, and there's no spoilers um, at all. I won't talk about any spoilers. Um, there's this uh, elderly gentleman who is a writer, and he has a room in his house full of lost things that he's found along the way. And we actually go into the backstory of how he found these items and the backstory of the items. So it's, it re, it's really, really interesting. Um, there's another character in there, a young woman who comes to work for him. She's very lost and herself, just like the objects, and she comes to work in his house for him and she finds herself by working there. Um, again, haven't finished it yet, but it's something that I really want to finish before the end of the year because it's just absolutely... It's just beautifully written. Side note, this is this is something that really, really creeped me out. And I want to find out whether this would creep you guys out as well. Um, the woman in the book, her marriage has ended. And that's that's not um, a spoiler. You, you find that out from the get-go. And his name is Vince. Now, I was out in the garden just doing a bit of gardening, listening to, I was listening to it on audio, audible. And um, I was actually underneath our house. We've got like a decking area. So I was just underneath it. And she was actually talking about her husband, Vince, and what her life was like with him. And I looked up and no lie, there was 
someone had written, you know, like when builders um, are using beams and things like that and they'll write their name on it or something like that. And on this steel beam was the name Vince written in black, in black pen. And it, re it really freaked me out because I was reading it. She was talking about Vince. I looked up and it was just written there and it, it was just really creepy, really creepy. But anyway, so I was obviously meant to read that book, but tangent, sorry. Um, next one. Do you have any autumnal books to transition into the end of the year? Now, I love autumn and winter. We're currently in Australia coming into our summer. Um, at the moment, though, it's raining and really quite miserable. But you know what? I I love what days like this when I don't have to go anywhere, when I can listen to the rain beating against the side of the house. I just think it's such a – we've actually had some really bad flood warnings, so – I'm, I'm worried about other people in Victoria, but in terms of like normal rain, let's put it that way, I love listening to it when I'm inside, just being able to curl up with a good book. So if you are in the state of Victoria, I hope you, you, you're staying safe during the rain storms because it's pretty bad. But another tangent, autumnal books. See, I'm rambling. I'm trying not to edit, so <laughs> we shall see. So autumnal books. Now, I love dark gothic fiction. I could read it any time of year because it's really what I would call a comfort read for me. Now, I have three choices and I don't know which one to pick. So if you guys can help me pick a book, that would be fantastic. The first one is um, Dark Matter by Michelle Paver. Is it going to show up? Yeah, it looks like that. Now, this book, I I was drawn to it because it's set, I think it's set in Antarctica and they're going on an expedition there and the light is diminishing. It's the season where there's not much sunlight and um, there's something dark lurking in the shadows. And just that premise alone just makes me want to read it. It just sounds fascinating. So that's the first option. <laughs> the second option is, again, gothic loveliness so it is the loney hang on andrew might by andrew michael hurley it looks like that again i've had good things about this um it's old crumbling house family secrets isolation again right up my street so that's another option the third option is the lie tree by francis hardinge look at that cover oh my goodness I'm going to have to get the hard copy books in these in these uh, editions, just saying, um, all the paperbacks. So this one, from what I understand, is all about a tree that if she tells the truth, it grows. Um, it's dark. It's thrilling. It's autumnal. So. Um, so, yeah, that, those are the three options. So if you guys can, like, point me into a direction of what you would what you would pick or what you would recommend if you read any of those without giving any spoilers. That would be awesome. Next question. Is there a new release you're still waiting for? Um, there's not really anything that comes to mind towards the end of the year that I can really think that um, I'd want to read. But I was watching Simon of Savage Reads. I think I just need to sort of link Simon up with my Goodreads account and just have every time he likes a book just to add it because that's normally what happens. Um, he talked about a book that's being released on the 1st of February, and it's called The Wicked Cometh by Laura Carlin, and it just sounds amazing. It's got witches, and it sounds dark and intriguing and gothic, and the cover is just beautiful. I'll definitely be getting the hardback copy of that one for sure. Um, next question. What are three books you want to read before the end of the year? So the ones that I've already told you about, I definitely want to finish before the end of the year. Um, I'd quite like to read um, Fell by Jen Ashworth. Um, that really intrigues me, that book. Um, and there's another one, The Proof of Love. Um, but I can't remember for the life of me who, who, who wrote it. But that one as well, that sounds really, really good. Excuse me. So those are the books that I'd like to get to before the end of the year. Next one. 
Number five, is there a book you think could still shock you and become your favourite book of the year? Do you know what? I have read some absolutely cracking reads in the last couple of months. Um, I read Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. And oh my goodness, she is such an intriguing and quirky narrator. She, we see things through her eyes. It, it will make it will touch your heart. It will make you cry. It will make you laugh at how she sees the world. We it slowly starts to unravel why she is the way she is, why she behaves the way she is. Um, she's also very inspiring because she doesn't because of her past experiences. She doesn't sort of conform to sort of social um, social rigidity. She's very much um, her own person even though she's in this very sort of microcosm, tiny world. But it's just fantastic. I've never read um, any character like her, and I just think she's really unique. Um, another two of the two books that were just amazing, um, this will be no surprise, was Tin Man by Sarah Winman. Um, made me laugh, made me cry. Um, I think it's always amazing when a writer writes not a very big book, but that can really pack a punch and... This story is just so touching and beautiful. And another one that I read that was equally touching was Kent Haruf, Our Souls at Night. I know this has recently been made into a film, I believe. I think it's on Netflix. I haven't seen it. But this, again, really, really slight book, but incredibly moving, incredibly powerful. I finished this at work and burst into tears. I was really angry and heartbroken but at the same time even though these books break your heart they kind of restore your faith in humanity and help you to explore making those human connections in life and the little things in life that help us breathe and cope and love and feel things and I think that's why I love these books, because it really, it gives you all the feels and it explores what it is to be human. It really does, um, no matter what you face. So I very much doubt something will come along and be any of these books that I've spoken about, but I'm always willing and open to be surprised, for sure. Um, I'm just take a drink of my tea. Oh, right, okay. Next question. <laughs> Oh, last question. <laughs> have you already started making plans for 2018? Yes, I have. So I was watching um, Russell from Ink and Paper blog the other day, and he is doing, let me get this right, around the world in a thousand pages, and he's going to be reading a different book from a different continent every single month, I believe. I hope that's right. Mm -hmm. And the first book we're going to be reading is The Changeling by Victor Lavelle. Um, it sounds awesome. Um, again, gothic, mysterious, um, thrilling read. So I will definitely be joining in on that that, that um, book club. Um, I'll give a, I'll put a link um, down below to to Russell's video so that you can check it out because it just sounds really interesting. So definitely we'll be taking part in that. Um, another thing that I want to do in 2018 is read more translated fiction. From different authors I want to read wider in terms of that so I'd like to read some different authors um, from translated fiction. Um, I'd also like to broaden my horizons in terms of crime fiction. Um, I love crime fiction. Um, I'm a big sucker for a good crime, crime novel. What I'd love to do is to be able to read one literary fiction and then one crime novel. So if you've got any crime novels out there that you think are amazing. Um, I'd love to hear that, hear about them. Um, I've read quite a lot of crime fiction, but there's there's definitely some authors that I haven't read before. So Tess Gerritsen I haven't read. Um, so I'm sure there's many, many others that I haven't read. But yeah, I would love I would love any of your advice on any good crime fiction that you've read. And that I think is it. Yes. Oh, and um, in terms of videos, I'm planning to try and film every Friday or Saturday and then post on the Sunday. So that's going to be my plan going forward. Um, thank you so much, guys, for, for being patient with me. And um, 
I really, if, if you want to do this tag, please, please post your video um, down below in the comment section because I'd love to see them. Um, if you want to, if you haven't got a channel but you'd love to answer the questions, I'll put the questions in the um, description box and you can put the answers in the comment section. Um, uh, your advice on which book that I should read next, I really, really, really appreciate that because um, I, yeah, I don't know which one to choose at all. Um, so, yeah. I hope you guys are having an awesome December so far. I think December is such a great time for YouTube, especially BookTube, because we get to see people doing Vlogmas and people doing gift guides, and I just think it's a really interesting time of year for us. Um, anything else you want to talk about in the comment section below, please put it down below. And, yeah, I shall hopefully see you guys very soon. Um, I'll also link Ariel's original video down in the description box. And if you haven't done already, please do this tag. Okay, guys, look after yourselves. Thanks. Bye.